Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the podcast version of Trey's Variety Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome, everyone, to Trey's Variety Hour, and I am not Trey Radcliffe. <laughs> this is Scott Jarvie. I am uh, doing some hosting today while Trey is, where is he at? He's off in the Caribbean somewhere? He's, he's, he's somewhere in the Himalayas. No, I don't know. He's, he's on a cruise, I think. He's on the big fantasy, the Disney yeah, he's, he's... boat ride. Yes, he is. So, uh, uh, Trey asked me to come in. We're going to have a really fun fun uh, theme today. We're talking about the Festival of Colors, which throughout the world is often named Holy. And we have a bunch of people here with us today that were at the Festival of Colors in Utah, which happens to be one of the largest of these uh, festivals in the world, uh, one of the largest gatherings. Obviously, more people celebrate it in India. And uh, we're going to show some pictures from that event, and we're going to even show a, a video or two from that event, and uh, and that's that. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Scott Jarby, and I am a uh, full-time photographer. I'm pretty uh, mostly known for doing a lot of wedding photography, as you can see, kind of behind me in my office. Uh, I have a I have a gallery throughout the this building with uh, 13 walls, kind of like that. And, uh, but I do a lot of travel stuff, and I try to stay very uh, involved in the photography community, especially on Google+, Plus, which a lot of these people is how uh, I connected with them and how I let them know about this event was through Google+, Plus, and you'll see some familiar faces here. Uh, we're going to go through them, and maybe one of the most familiar faces, well, and also you can uh, find me, uh, Scott Jarvie, on Google+, Plus, and my website is Jarvie Digital, and that's J-A-R-V-I-E. Uh, and like I was saying, one of the more uh, familiar faces here is Thomas Hawk. Thomas Hawk. Yo, Javi. Yo, Javi. <laughs> Player. So, who, where who, can they find you and who are you there with? Who are you, uh, Thomas Hawk? I, I'm here with my <laughs> wife, Julie Peterson, who was also on the trip. And uh, you can find me at thomashawk.com. Or on any of the networks on Flickr or on Google Plus or Twitter or Facebook, just uh, do a search for uh, Thomas Hawk, and I should pop right up. Nice, Julia. Yeah. Tell us something interesting about yourself. You were there at the event. Oh yes, that was very exciting. I, I'm, I always think these are going to be long nights and not much sleep, and I'm always so excited just to be away from. The daily chaos here, but uh, it's equally very, very nice. Had a great and time. We're, and we're going to be able to see a couple of your pictures as well. We well, we're going to. I haven't processed as many as I would like, but um, I have some in the stream that I'm I'm happy to share. Nice, great. Now let's go over another familiar face here, Lotus Carroll. Hey. Everybody, I'm Lotus Carroll. I'm an Austin-based photographer and blogger. Um, you can find me all over the web. I've sometimes been called a social media or attention whore, so you can find me anywhere, Flickr, Facebook, and Google+, under my name, Lotus Carroll. Uh, not many people know that I actually have a uh, bachelor's and a master's degree in psychology. And yes, I am analyzing you. <laughs> hey, Jarvie. Lotus also does a kick-ass photography show on Wednesday nights called Photo Talk Plus. Oh, yeah, that thing. Who else is on that show? Yeah. Some other dork. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's, uh, let's start over on our left-hand side. Uh, we got a couple of Utah natives with us that were obviously already in town, and they just came over for the event. Dave Daniels. Yes, I'm Dave Daniels. I'm based out of Salt Lake City. I uh, moved here after growing up as a military brat, and photography is a second job slash hobby. Um, and right now I do a lot of portraits, weddings, and trying to do 300 composites by the end of the year. 
So that's a little bit about me. Nice. And hopefully we'll get to see maybe an example of one of the composites at the end. That would be great. Yes. I am actually going to skip the next person because he's going to be kind of our <laughs> special guest. Uh, and we're going to hear a little bit more from him. Um, so I'm going to go straight over to Jeremy Davies, another Utah. Yes, I'm uh, Jeremy Davies. Um, Utah, Bay. well, I've actually only been here for two years. Um, I mainly do landscapes. Um, you can find me at Surreal Photography. It's S-U-R dash real, R-E-A-L, photography.com, um, or just on Google Plus at Jeremy Davies. Um, and just, man, doing that hangout with everyone else was just probably one of the highlights of my year so far. <laughs> Nice. Well, that's cool. Okay, John. Hey, hey. Uh, this is uh, John this is Armstrong. John Armstrong. <laughs> Sorry, Brad Peg. Um, I am based in Salt Lake City, and I can be found on Twitter and Flickr as just Blurb. I was Blurb before Blurb.com, so I could probably work an angle there. But So I'm Blurb on Twitter, Blurb on Flickr. I'm J-O-N Armstrong on Google+. Plus. And my website's called Blurb O Mat, like laundromat, but uh, Blurb, Blurbomat.com. Now, uh, I've noticed quite a bit of traffic coming from your blog. It seems to be quite the popular, popular blog. You've been running it for quite a few years, right? Yeah, I started, I started that site and I actually bought the domain in 1999, and it was a kind of a portfolio site, and then I turned it into a blog in 2001. So, actually, there's a, there was a, when you... T uh, when we were at the festival, there was kind of interesting uh, story where Lotus met you. Lotus, tell us about this. Oh, you're going to embarrass me, Scott. Well, <laughs> back uh, several years ago, I started my blog. It was a mommy blog, and I started it because of John's wife, Heather Armstrong, known as Deuce. I'm sure he like likes to be followed by that all over the place. But you know what? It's <laughs> awesome. I'm I'm stoked about that. I'm I've had an awesome time with that. So. I'm, I'm actually happy to hear that. that Her she... blog was the first blog I'd ever seen. That's how I learned what a blog was. And I thought, um, I mean, not to downplay how wonderful she is, but I thought, I can do that. <laughs> so that's why I started. Nice. Awesome. Hey, Ricardo. Ricardo Lagos. We got some Google representation here. <clears throat> so the, that rumor's true. I am a Google employee. And, but I'm also a big Scott Jarby fan, and that's really why I come to all these things. <laughs> And I like to follow Lotus and Thomas and, and everyone around and take pictures with them. So I got a few pictures, and I'm happy to show them. So, Ricardo, you're saying that you came to Utah just to hang out with me, no, nothing to do with the festival? Well, you know, one of those two reasons were up there, you know, uh, top okay. five. <laughs> Ricardo, any, came, Scott. Ricardo, any new and upcoming Google Plus features you'd like to announce tonight? Yeah, right. <laughs> I want to go to work tomorrow, so we'll just <laughs> Oh, come on. You're, are you releasing the API on Friday? Is that what you said? Uh -huh. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, and uh, personally, I'd like to you know get to know some of these other... We've got uh, two people that weren't at the festival but are hanging out with us right now. Is it common to uh, chat with you guys, Dave? Sure, yes. So first we got Tony. Tony works for Twit, and he's uh, broadcasting for us. Hello, Tony. Hello, everybody. Thank you hey, for that. Hello, Tony. Hey, Tony. <laughs> I'm Dave Effer. I'm uh, the producer of this show. Um, Trey couldn't be here, but I'm here. So you can find me at plusdave.com. I am an amateur photographer and IT guy. And now back to you, Jarvie. Nice. Okay. Well, uh, our show is about the Festival of Colors. So let's start explaining that a little bit. The Festival of Colors is a, well, it is a festival called Holi uh, in the Indian tradition. Uh, and here in Utah, in this small little farming community called Spanish Fork, uh, there is tens of thousands of, photo of, not photographers, but of people come to this event at a Krishna temple in this farming community and just have this all day long party and they throw colors into the air. And uh, one of the more common questions is, is that chalk dust? Is that bad? Is it dangerous for you? It is uh, a cornstarch base. Is that correct? Did anyone check the packages to read the ingredients? 
Well, when they announced it, that's what they said it was. Yeah, it was supposed yeah, to be organic, organic too, so I thought it was, you know. And it has a perfume. Yes, and, and because this festival is partly to celebrate the the burning of the witch Holika, and another thing is to uh, celebrate the coming of spring. So all the colors of spring and the scented, uh, the colors are scented, so it's the uh, the... The smells of spring, the, the pleasant smells. And uh, the person in Utah that organizes, his name is Ch Charu Das, and uh, I've been friends with them for a few years now. I've been going for about five years. I, I missed one year, and I don't think I'll ever do that again because it was too good to miss. And I've seen it grow. Um, I mean, I came 10 years after it started, and when I came, there was about 4,000 people and now I don't know what their numbers are. Somewhere between twenty and forty thousand people. I'd say more around forty. I read a, an article that quoted a newspaper saying there was eighty thousand. Bah. Well, there certainly at was a hundred. At least a hundred were probably there. Two fifty. <laughs> no way. Two fifty. Do I hear anyone? I'll look it up for you. I'll look it up. I'll look up anyone higher than two fifty? It felt like Woodstock to me. Yeah? yeah. And has anyone been to anything similar to that? No, I, I've never. That was incredible, and that that's just kind of in my backyard is crazy. Like I had no idea about it until I saw your thing on uh, Google Plus, and so for me this was a a really incredible event and and weekend to to shoot. Um, I, I just I had no idea that this existed. I knew I knew there was a temple, but I didn't know that they did this this yeah. event. Well. Um... Well, first of all, we're going to jump right in to show a video that kind of shows uh, just the fun, the funness of the event. Uh, but I see in the in the chat room on Twit TV that uh, we've got someone that linked to the Krishna, the Utah Krishna's page. So if you want to read some more information about them, and they do a pretty good job of uh, showing. Uh, great links to pictures and videos from the event there as well. And you can also go on to Google Plus and do a search for hashtag Festival of Colors and, and see some of the posts that we've been doing uh, quite a few of. But first, let's get a good rundown of the event by uh, meeting Devin Graham and having him introduce himself and his video. Hello, everyone. Um, as Scott was saying, I am Devin, and what I do for a living is I find things that I think are viral or visually appealing and make YouTube videos on it. Um, and that's literally all I do for a living. So I originally heard about the Color Festival from Scott Jarvie a couple years back, and this was the first year I was around to actually do a video on that. So with that ado, I will show you guys the video. Um, do a screen share. Second. Do you guys see my window with the video up? Yes, yep. we do. Yes. Okay. We will get started.
So I've seen that so many times. Nice. I kind of wanted it. Awesome. <laughs> Love that. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm sure there's going to be a couple of questions about the video. We've got a lot of photographers here, but if anyone has a couple of questions about how, to, how you made that, that'd be great. Um, way. Tell us, how, how was it, though? Because you got that up pretty quickly after the festival, right? Yeah, well, with, with videos, when you do a videos on events, because it's so talked about right at the moment, you know, if I take a couple of weeks, which normally a video to edit something like that, it would take at least two to three weeks to edit and put together. But because there's so much talk about it right now, if I don't release it right away, people aren't going to share it and the hype for it's going to die down, you know. And when my whole purpose is to make videos that people share, I have to release it right away. So I pull basically two all-nighters. Anyone that knows will say it was two full all-nighters just to get the video done as far as rendering it out and then exporting it out and converting it and then editing it all the way through. So, How much know. footage did you take? Um, we actually had four cameras there, um, me and I had three other friends. And each person was kind of assigned different roles. Like one person, he was just shooting slow motion stuff. Other person, he was shooting stuff kind of right in the crowd. And then I was kind of free-floating all over the place. And I had one other person doing a lot of wide stuff. Um, so, I mean, there was four of us. So we had a lot of footage, and we shot the entire day. Um, but the main thing, because I think they do the throw every two hours, you know, as far as the main big throw. And that was the most important thing that we captured. So we made sure we were there for every one of those. Did you guys have to fight over who got to do the crowd surfing video portion? <laughs> Um, no, actually, we just met people there, and we had a little teeny camera, contour camera, and we just asked people that we thought were photogenic. We're like, do you mind crowd surfing and holding the camera up on a stick, you know? Oh, that's cool. I thought yeah, they were all, part of the group. Yeah, so it was just people that we met as far as friends, and we just made sure we kept our eye on them so they didn't take off of the camera. <laughs> cool. That's great. But yeah. Was, what, what camera did you mostly use to shoot it with yourself? Um, I was shooting on the 5D Mark II, and I just bought a 5D Mark III, which I was, because I didn't want to get that one dirty right away, you know, just because it was brand new. So I had my other friend shooting far away on a, on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens to get all those shots. Yeah, who would get a, who would get a 5D Mark III dirty at the Colors Festival? Who would do no that? one does that. <laughs> all of us, right? Um, yeah, so and then we had a 7D as well that we were shooting on, and then a Canon 60D. But yeah, all Canon DSLR cameras besides that Contour, which is like a GoPro camera. Yeah, cool. Yeah, well, I really like the crowd surfing ones. Those what did are you really, have? really yeah. cool. Yeah. What was that? The crowd surfing ones. What did you edit it in? Oh, Final Cut, uh, Final Cut 7. Okay. Where did, where did you get your 5D Mark III? Um, picture line, actually. Oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, I got it from Fisher Line. We love those guys, don't we? Yeah, we do. No complaints. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, uh, so was there any other interesting story about when you were filming? Um, well, originally we got there, and, um, I mean, we all spent, like, I don't know, 20 minutes making sure our cameras were super protective. Like, we stuck the plastic bags around them and put rubber bands around them. But when I got out there, me personally, I was like, I have no control as far as shooting video and changing the exposure and the shutter and all that other kind of stuff. So I was like, I just got to take the bullet and I got rid of the plastic bag and I was just shooting without any protection whatsoever on the camera, um, which is kind of a bold move. Um, but I actually didn't have any problems with my camera. I came home, I just sprayed it off with dust and I, I cleaned it off and my camera worked just fine. You can't even tell that I was at the color festival. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we didn't run into really any problems. Um, the cameras, they work just fine. Um, I mean, they're all kind of the higher end cameras, which do really good in, in dust weather and that kind of stuff, you know? So we really didn't have any problems as far as that kind of stuff goes. Yeah. What, what lens were you shooting with? And you were in the crowd most of the time. Yes, I shot the whole, I mean, the whole, because there's so much dust, we never changed lenses at all. So the whole time I was shooting on the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8. Um, but yeah, that's what I shoot everything with. Um, so. Big fan. We sent, we sent the 5D Mark II back into Canon to have it cleaned afterwards, and they cleaned it, but they made a note and said that there was a foreign object found on the sensor. Oh, really? And the mirror or something. It was scratched, yeah. Scratched, kind of. Oh, just from the desk itself? Uh, I don't know. I probably scratched the mirror doing something else, knowing me. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, Tom, I think it's when you stuck your finger in it last time. Yeah, I usually just stick my tongue in there to clean you things. You lift it, and then you, you clean it off that way. Well, yeah. they're doing 
they're doing something similar to the color festival later on this month it's called the color run it's called color me rad and it's similar to to this event but it's actually like a race and i'm filming that as well so i'm waiting to get my camera like professionally cleaned after that race so i don't have to clean it twice but yeah i'm for sure going to get it cleaned by the professionals eventually after that here i'm going to show a picture of uh devin here working his magic with his uh glide cam and I noticed that you, you did have it protected at the beginning. And then uh, later on, I took pictures of you and uh, it, it didn't have that on anymore. So now I understand. Yes, that was the truth behind it. I mean, as you guys can, t I'm sure you guys know, you know, with all the powder going everywhere, your lens is constantly getting covered. So I had to keep on sticking my shirt and keep on rubbing it and rubbing it and rubbing it. And like every part of my shirt, like inside and out was completely smothered just from cleaning my lens, but it got it. I mean, it got it good enough where you could see through the lens. Yeah. Cool. Actually. Yeah. We're going to uh, ask some of the other people real fast. Uh, and then I know you got to go, but um, stay with us for a moment. Uh, what, what did some of you others do to help protect your camera? I asked you what to do, Scott. Yeah. So what did you I find? Take the, I take... John. Pardon? What did you find was the most helpful thing? Well, I think the gaffer tape was the best. The gaffer tape. I, I had a, a 70 to 200 that I, I left on my camera all day. I taped over the uh, stabilizer and uh, autofocus and all, all the switches, and I taped over the focus. I, I chose that lens because the, the focus ring doesn't move when you do autofocus. And I just kept the zoom ring so that I could, uh, uh, you know, compose shots. So... Uh, that I, I taped over everything except for uh, the viewfinder and the, the LCD, and then I had a I did like a gallon Ziploc bag that I put over the whole thing, uh, and that worked actually pretty well. Here, look, David's got a picture. He's got a picture up of. Is this what you did for the festival of colors, David? Yeah, this is what I did last year. I used a. Uh, a rain cover that you can get for like five dollars, six dollars. I got it at Picture Line, and uh, I gaffer taped the front of the uh, bag to the lens hood. I put a UV filter on the front. I used gaffer tape around the lens hood. The lens is a Tamron, so it's a push pull, which makes it really easy uh, to focus. And then I use a rubber band on the other end around my arm, uh, and, which makes it. Uh, Fairly, unless I take my hand in and out of the bag, uh, it works really well. And this year I actually put two or three packets of silica gel to try and keep it <laughs> a little bit oh, drier because nice. yeah. your hand sweats. And, and I, it did okay. I did. But, I you know, used a cover as well, but instead of putting my hand inside of the bag, I just out. tied it off on the bottom really tight. And I just, I just you know shot through the plastic. I, I used my fingers through the plastic instead of having it inside the bag and it worked just as well. And then I didn't have to worry about taking my hand in and out of it at all. Here we Welcome got a picture of, of, of David. <laughs> That's great. <good. laughs> so do you think that do, protecting it to this degree made you this confident that you went straight into the middle of the crowds apparently? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, even with last year, I, I knew that I could get in uh, to the middle of the crowd and, uh, yes, they're jumping around, so you just have to watch out for the mosh pit and avoid that and uh, watch out for the people who are body surfing on the crowd because, uh, yeah, I, I can't catch somebody if it's my turn, but uh, it works really well. Uh, I think next time I'm going to double double up the rubber band uh, just a little bit tighter around the wrist. But uh, I d didn't have to spend much time cleaning the camera afterwards. Did anyone have to spend any time cleaning the camera afterwards much? No. no. I did a little bit with a little brush and with a little bit of air, but not much. <clears throat> well, I was surprised. I was surprised oh. how little it needed. <laughs> so, I want to go back to Devin yeah. for a second. Um, I'm not sure if you guys actually watched uh, Devin in action, but the fun thing about following Devin around was that um, this is a pretty outrageous event already in that there's stuff everywhere. There's people going crazy. And then Devin and his, and, his, and his group of friends, his team, really whipped these guys up into an even higher frenzy. And he generated these really great photo opportunities. And all I had to do was kind of like stick back a little bit further back from Devin and his, and his guys. And I have a bunch of shots that are, that are really fun 
like you know there's i actually have a shot of you know the, the backflip that uh I don't know if that's one of your friends that did it or not, or if somebody yeah. you met there. But I actually got the. I actually also have a a sequence, the sequence of the of the backflip that I I caught on, on my camera. Uh -huh. So you know, I think I benefited greatly by just following you around a little bit. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm honored. Here, here you can see Devin uh, yelling at them. What were you usually <laughs> yelling at them, Devin? What was that? What were you usually yelling? Um. Be sexy, be hot, love live. Just, I, I think when you joke with people and, and make fun of yourself in a loud, kind of obnoxious way, it gives them permission to be themselves as well. So I think a lot of people are intimidated by the camera. So I think for me, myself, I've noticed coming in and shooting video, as I'm making fun of myself and yelling and joking with them and becoming an equal with them, I get a lot more natural reaction. So with me yelling, I mean, that's what I was doing is just kind of hyping them up joking with them, making fun of them, kind of like in a friendly way, though, like not to be like diminishing or anything. And then they, they have fun with that, you know, and I think I get so much better reaction because of it. So that's my... I, I, found, you could, I found you could pretty much get right in people's face. I mean, they're there to be seen. They're there, obviously, they're an attraction. Uh, I found very few people that were not responsive to having their portrait taken. I got pretty much right in people's face. Yeah. So... um Devin, you, I know that you, uh, we've known each other for many years, met on a movie set. Yes. And uh, you've recently been going all over the world. Uh, you were recently in New Zealand and not too long ago in Iceland. Uh, what's your Africa what? last week. Oh, that's right. What's your next big uh, adventure? What's well, your next project? Um, next project, I'm doing a World War II reenactment. Um, I got three World War II tanks, one of them a Panzer, the only one in North America that actually shoots. And we're basically recreating World War II. I got 40 extras, um, four oh. World War II Jeeps, a motorcycle. Um, the tank's literally going to be shooting um, blank bullets. Um, but it's going to be one of our next like big YouTube videos that are kind of going all out. We've got several people that are sponsoring it. Uh, Smug Mug, that um, photography website, will be one of the big sponsors on that video. Go uh, Smug Mug. Yes, hey, Smug Mug hey, for life. So so wait, this is kind of a departure a little departure a little bit from your typical videos, right? Yeah, it is. I just want to – I'm constantly doing different videos, um, branching off. I mean, this week I'm shooting another YouTube video called Puppy Easter. And what it is is cute, adorable puppies and little um, bunnies and little baby chickens running around. I'm just looking for different content constantly because I don't want to get brown as just a cinematographer that does happy things you know, or cute things. I'm just constantly looking for different things and branding myself in every department. You did that for Christmas. How many did, how many did the puppy Christmas get? How many I hits? I got 3 million hits. Wow. Nice. So this is basically the puppy number two. So we'll see if it goes viral as well, but I think it has a lot of potential. So we'll be shooting it tomorrow and then we'll be releasing it probably Thursday or Friday. So look out so, for puppy. Someone on the chat says that you should then do tank battles puppies. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a really good idea. Um, ah. Normandy style with all the little puppies running up the hill. I like it. <laughs> and, and, and a couple people recognize some of your videos, like the puppy Christmas. What do you think you're the most known for? Which video do people go, he's the guy from the... The, the human slingshot video and the world's biggest rope sling video that we did in Moab. I mean, those are the two with the most hits. One has 10 million, the other one has almost 7 million, I think. Um, so those are the ones that have been seen the most, and because of that, I think that's what I'm kind of known for. Nice. So there's definitely the more extreme sport kind of thing, taking a different take on it, for sure. Well, anyone else have a couple questions for Devin while, uh, while we have him handy? How did you get your footage to match up with all the different cameras? Um, I use a picture style, and I just made sure everyone was shooting on auto white balance, and then they had exact same picture style that I was using. Um, because of the YouTube videos that I do, it's it's had to make it done really fast. So there's actually no color correction in most of my videos. Um, it's oh. just straight off the camera. But I use a certain picture style that kind of brings up all the colors, so I don't have to throw it in Final Cut or throw it in color and kind of tweak everything, just because I don't have time to do all that kind of stuff. So did you run the footage through anything before you pulled it into Final Cut? Um, I throw it through compressor, and I mm -hmm. convert it to Apple ProRes 422, and mm -hmm. then that's what I edit in. Nice. Okay. And then I export it straight out as an MOV file, but I don't do any tweaking or anything after that. It's just as it is. So. Nice. Any other Have you thought about bringing puppies to the Colors Festival? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that would be huge hit too. We actually had one little dog in our video, but the more puppies, definitely the more better it will be. It will do. <laughs> more puppies, more views. It's true. Anything cute is what people love to see. So, trademark. Any other questions, y'all? No, it looks like. Uh, and so, where can they find you? Uh, I know guys, you have two channels, right? Tell us about both of them. Yeah, so you can find me on youtube.com slash Devin, D E V I N, Super Tramp. And then you can also get on youtube.com slash Devin, D E V I N, Graham. And that will take you to my second channel, which is my behind the scenes channel, which I go over a lot of the camera stuff that I do. And I actually did a behind the scenes just on the Color Festival as well. But those are the two places you can find my YouTube videos. And then on Twitter and Facebook, the same name, Devin Super Tramp. Um, you can find me most places just through that name. So, All right. Thanks, David, Devin, for coming yeah. along. No problem. Thanks, guys. I will see you later. All right. Bye. Later. See ya. Hey, Thomas, I, got, I, I pulled this out of my the reel that oh. I haven't processed for you. Nice. Look at that little dude. It's a little sad, man, to bring a puppy to this thing. <laughs> there was yeah. a cat there, too. Did you see the cat? <clears throat> puppy can't defend himself, but... They did, well, it's they hard because you know they get and, and a lot of that chalk they have a lot of asbestos and stuff, but, so it's probably not good. <laughs> well, and you'll see babies. Um, on the puppy and asbestos. <laughs> you'll no, see newborn babies all, there as well. Corn, it's all cornstarch, and they they regulate it when you come in to make sure you don't have you're not bringing colors from something else like you just bought them online or to asbestos. make sure that it's safe. So, didn't they say this particular the, one? <laughs> the cornstarch makes the grass greener when it's all over. Oh yeah. Didn't, did he say something about that? I don't know. Or maybe I was. Maybe, maybe the green cornstarch does. It was uh, metaphorical. Okay. See, yeah, I don't know. I was a little delirious at the end there. So. <laughs> you sniffed too much dust. It was. Yeah. It was all that booze, John, that they served at the well, festival. You know, <laughs> the lack of the booze is the thing. <laughs> it took me about three days to feel normal again once I got home. That it was that it was four bars they had at the festival. <laughs> for you guys, what was your main uh, attraction for the festival? Why did you guys come? What did you really want to take pictures of? Because Jar Scott Jarvis said it'd be cool. <laughs> ah. No, I wanted to get portraits. I wanted to get portraits, <laughs> interesting portraits of people. Uh, I think events and festivals and celebrations are great places to get in close. People are much more loosened up. Uh, they're much more amenable to having their photograph taken. Obviously, the color makes an incredibly dynamic uh, portrait. And so for me, I mostly focus on portraits. Yes, yeah, Scott, you, you, you showed some really nice pictures back in you know June and July and August of last year. And it just seemed like a really unique opportunity to get something different. Yeah, someone mentioned uh, in the chat just now that... Uh, going to this one in Utah for some of us in the United States is definitely a lot cheaper than the alternative of going to India. Well, I definitely want to go to India now. Now that I've seen this one, I, I definitely want to be in India. And from what I talk to my friends, um, they say northern India is the place to go if you really want to see these sort of festivals. I bet they don't have as near as many Mormons at it, Ricardo. Yeah, white kids. <laughs> Not as many college students from Utah. Yeah, not as many Mormon college students. Yeah, yep. BYU isn't as heavily represented in India. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's Utah's one chance for a hippie love festival. Uh, yeah, except without the sex and drugs and free love and all that. <laughs> yeah, and a they have free, free love. hugs. Free hugs. Some free hugs. Free right. hugs there were free hugs. There were a lot of free hug signs. Um, I was gonna. I was going to say, Scott, uh, I don't normally shoot people. So for me, this was a real uh, great opportunity to learn how to approach people in public and get shots without having some of the awkwardness that might exist normally. So I and I got I was really happy with with uh, what I got. I mean, I, I still haven't even gone through half of my my images uh, that I have. So I'm just completely thrilled with what happened. It was like a free for all. I mean, there yeah. was really like no limits yeah. to what you could do as far as shooting people. Not like on the street. <laughs> I tell you, I took three 3,500 shots, and I only have one set of frames where I got flipped off. <laughs> Probably the best picture. Good. Yeah. How many pictures did you guys take? And were you there both days? 
I was there one day and I took about 4,500 that day. All right. Frames. And I processed, I flagged uh, 967 or so, and I've processed 365 of those 967 so far. <laughs> Whoa. Have you slept ever? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Julia, how many did you take in comparison? Oh, gosh. I haven't even gone through them all. I just did the precursor. I have no idea. Yeah. Does anyone else know how many they took? I am looking on my... I'm looking mine up. I, I I survived about 900 photos. Well, I took about 3,500, and I'm probably only going to keep about maybe 100. Yeah. Is that for both days? You're talking about just the days of the Colors Festival or the entire walk? <laughs> just two days. Oh, just Colors Festival. Two days, yeah, Colors Festival. Yeah, I took over 4,000 on the one day of the Colors Festival. I took a little over 12,000 for the whole weekend. Yeah, wow. you were there for about four or five days, right? Yeah, I got in on Wednesday, Wednesday and the two cool cats, three cool cats named Scott Jarvey and Sam Scholes and Jesse Stade drove me around in Lotus. I, um, yeah, so I, I, it's, it's interesting because I'm kind of like you, Thomas. I took about the same amount on that day, on that first day, which for me is – by far record. I think it's like twice my record. I just said, Hey, why not? I'm going to take a bunch, but I went through them and I was pretty selective. And I, I, I think barely a thousand are, are the ones that I'm going to look at, but I'm going to go down even further and I might only edit maybe a hundred or two. So. <laughs> when you're photographing, are you doing it in burst mode usually, or do you do like a, just a single frame here or there? Usually uh single frames, but I do have it on uh continuous high on my on my camera and with the double a's and the d700 it was at eight frames a second so i found that it went boom 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 sometimes when i was like this is amazing i had to take a picture and i wasn't trying to be gentle i was like hurry hurry and it went boom 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 but they're they're always moving around at this at this festival it's like dance pictures for me like at weddings when you're at the dance portion they're not the most exciting pictures but they're moving around so much, you end up taking a lot of pictures and only keeping some. Yeah, I was um, going to say yeah. that I wished I had a higher frame rate. I'm like, I have, a, I shot with the Canon uh, 5D Mark II, and I really wanted a, a higher frame rate for, for stills. It didn't, it, I, it couldn't keep up sometimes with some of the sequences I wanted, especially with the color toss. That because that's yeah. over in like two, three <clears throat> seconds, and it's yep. Well, this is, this is a good, a good segue. I, I wanted uh, you guys to all bring in a picture uh, from this kind of monumental color toss, which you know, we were there for quite a few of them. And, and most locations, I must mention that they, they really only do one if it's some like American, like a lot of college campuses do it and they'll have like, here's the, the color throw. Um, and in India, it's like all day long, it's just happening. But uh, at this festival, they did it five times that first day. And we're going to go over first to Jeremy, who has a picture up on screen share, and he'll tell us a little bit about it. On this one, it was, uh, <laughs> whenever they, it was the first toss. And uh, I, I, wanted, I held my camera up ahead of my head so that I could get a view of everything. But little did I know that I was actually pointing a little too far down. So I actually just got pictures of everyone's butts the entire time. But luckily, I was able to uh, grab a little bit of the end of the toss, but it's still kind of, you can still see some colors, but it's got that haze and mush of all the colors coming together. But it was pretty funny. Nice. Did you try different things on the different uh, color throws? Um, I... I... I, on my second one, I did behind the stage, um, and that one came out okay, but that one that I shared was probably the best one that I've gotten so far. All right, we've got a different view here from uh, John. John, tell us about your picture here. So uh, this was uh, – I was there the second day only, and I it was kind of a fluke, but um, – I wanted to get the sea of people and just the the craziness of the color when people throw, you know, you get these bits, like it's like a, 
uh, Saving Private Ryan movie where there's like you know bits and pieces of Ryan. debris flying amidst all this crazy color. And and I I uh, wanted to show the crowd too. And I don't really have many pictures of the temple, so um, this I like this one because I actually got some temple shots. That's a really cool photograph. I like that. Oh, thank now, you. You zoomed in quite a. What is that? Let's zoom oh, in. So I zoomed in because I wanted to show this thing right here, like this, uh, that little yellow curl. Oh. Um, that like whip, whipped around thing, but now I'll come back out. Um, there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. That's one of my favorite shots of the weekend, actually. And it, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, we're going to go uh, check at Ricardo's, another up close. So this shot happened on the second day. <clears throat> and the first day I shot it on Aperture Priority, and none of my I'm, I don't really, wasn't really happy with the color throws. They were fairly normal, um, not super interesting in my opinion, my first day. So the second day I shot it shutter priority, and I just, uh, for the color throws, I set it up to one four thousandths, so I could really just freeze the moment. And this was shot right in front of the stage. And there's two things that happened. One was... Um, after the initial throw, it got it usually got dark pretty quickly, but I continued shooting. This is way at, this is this is like probably two or three seconds after the initial throw, and so by some stroke of luck, there's light that that peers through and it lit up the color still, and so um, this is my first shot. It just has movement, and it has still lots of different colors, um, and I think that that really captured for me what what, what I really enjoyed about the weekend. Nice. I love that shot. That's great. We're going to go over to David. Uh, I think he's got a picture too. Yeah, th this one crowd, right? Yeah, I I like to get into the crowd. the 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 one uh, chance, of, well, the one issue if you're in the crowd is that when people throw their uh, hands up into the air, their hand might go right in front of your lens. And I do have a number of throws where I just had nice big arm in front of a lot of color behind it. And so uh, it is luck, luck of the draw. And I, I just wanted to make sure I was always somewhere else during one of the big throws and just put it on burst, hold it up as tall as I could, which is probably about seven feet, eight feet, and just hope I get something during the, during the toss. You had better luck than I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I shot with a 5D Mark II, so I only had three three frames a second. So it's, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm saving my pennies for a 5D Mark III for next That's a great year. capture. That's really nice. Well, thank you. Lotus, do you have a picture of the group, of the of the throw? Yes, I do. You do? And then, we're, then we'll go to uh, a new person here. we got Mike joining us, so we're going to go to him right after that. Nice. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Ah. Tell us about it. Um, I actually had a hard time with the throws because I tried to do them from down front several times, and I just wasn't getting what I wanted down there. Um, got a lot of the hands in front of the screen kind of thing. And I was using a 70 to 200, so, I mean, I couldn't really <laughs> do anything they got something, you know, a big view like this from up close. So I learned my lesson and I went way up the steps on the temple. And this was actually the last throw. And so I got uh, several of these and I'm actually going to make a, an animated GIF and join in the animated GIF crowd. Because uh, everyone with, loves those. Yes, they're the best. <laughs> Probably a ton of people will unfollow me, but it'll be okay. Um, but have this a million is my favorite. Left. What? You'll have a million followers still left over. Oh, okay. So anyway, this is my favorite one. And you can see the stage at the front, and you can see all the shoes that were getting thrown on the top. That's what those actually are, those, like, little dark spots up there at the top of the stage. People's I, shoes. I tell you there. what, there are so fewer shoes than there, there have been in years past. Oh, my no, gosh. Sure. That, that, the top of that used to be full of shoes. Well, you know what? There were actually, I think because this was the last throw on the second day, but like the first day, there were a lot more of them up there, I noticed. Yeah. But yeah, this is, out of all the shots I took of the actual organized throws, this one was my favorite with all the color at one time. Wait, this is the last throw on the second day? Yep. 
Where 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 am I? Because I went right into the middle of the crowd. Probably obscured. Obscured by the well, that didn't happen to Michael. Let's go to Michael. <laughs> yeah, he, com he complained mightily about you. Yes, unmute yourself, Michael, and uh, tell us. Well, luckily, that actually happens to be the photo that I am going to share. So great segue. I'm so good at this. Perfect segue. Oh. I'm amazing. Nice. Oh, that is a pretty picture. Awesome. I love that. So mine's still loading. So do you see the uh, the massive Jarvi tripod in the center? <laughs> That's that makes the picture, right? It, it does, right? But I don't know. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I saw this beautiful colors, a, a beautiful temple. Everything was peaceful and beautiful. And then I just see Jarvi's huge tripod in the middle. Uh, so I went ahead and did a little work put my uh, Photoshop CS5 uh, to action and got rid of the tripod. I don't know if you can see that, guys. Yeah. Nice. Oh, whoa. Nice work. Wow. So the tripod is gone, and uh, it's like back to the future when Michael J. Fox's hand starts disappearing when he's playing guitar. <laughs> Jarvie's tripod is no more, and the scene is peaceful again. Was Jarvie replaced with Huey Lewis? Yeah. I wish. Okay. A lot better singer than Jarvie. But, yeah. but this also was the uh, the last throw of uh, Sunday, the second day. Nice. Well, I wanted to show uh, something maybe a, a, a tad bit different. Uh, well, no, a few people did the same thing, uh, getting right in the crowd. Uh, and I just, uh, like uh, Michael was showing, I put my uh, camera up on a... Uh, on the tripod with a with a uh, cable release and held it up in the air and just went to town and hoped that it got focused. When it got really, really uh, dusty in there, it had a hard time focusing, but at this point, at the initial explosion, it did all right, so. Nice. Oh, that, I should have so synced awesome. it up a little bit better, Michael, and uh, got <laughs> the other side of it, but I haven't even looked at day two pictures yet. <laughs> So, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to Thomas real fast and, and see if he's got a got one of the crowd. And then right after that, Thomas, would you uh, show us one of your favorite portraits? Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so I do have one uh, of the curse. Uh, let's see. Hopefully this works. Yeah, we can see it. You see it? Oh, I love that. Uh, yes. So that that is love that. that is of the crowd. Hmm, my computer's hanging, so I can't see it. But I assume you guys can see it. Yes, we can see. Yeah, it. looks great. So awesome. Yeah, and and, and I took um, I, you know, I took lots of different portraits. Um, I tried to focus on those. So you know, I tried to get in as close as I could. And I really wanted to get sort of emotion. And so, you know, I don't know that I that I have a favorite, but, you know, this is sort of typical here of what I got. And I, sh I was shooting the 135, and so I wanted to get in as close as I could. So I did stuff like this and, um, you know, stuff like this. Nice. nice. Um, yeah, you kept that lens on pretty much the whole time, and I think that's what helped you out because your camera was pretty covered, but you never changed the the lens, so you didn't have to worry too much. Yeah, I mean, I really like. I really wanted to focus on portraits, and uh, I like playing around with some of the black and white stuff that was kind of different because it looks like the black. anti color, but gives us sort of. Yeah, really cool sort of sort of edge, but I wanted to capture emotion. I wanted to capture really tight, close portraits. Um, you know, people. Um, you know, so I, I just really focused almost the entire time on that. You know, I got a couple of the, the color throws, but um, mostly, I, mostly I was there to get portraits. Um, I love that zip line that they had. The guy that did the video down the zip line. So yeah, there was another video for Good Line Films, 
uh, they used the zip line, and they told a little bit more of the story. For me, Devin told more about the the happiness and the party aspect of it, and Goodline told more of the uh, of the story of the festival. Yeah, I felt like yeah, I really like the black and white stuff. I really like. I really liked I have some of the stuff that I think that took the color away gave you, gave you so much more emotion. Are, so, are you I mean, I, I really, I was surprised. Are you saying that they're too white? You know, I needed them to be <laughs> not so white. No, I just, I, I just, you know, I think it underneath all the color were just some really nice emotions and portraits and the color was great too. I mean, don't get me wrong. 90% of what I produce out of this will be color. Nice. But the black and white, you know, I think there was an opportunity to shoot some really nice portraits. And if you can get beyond the color, in some ways the color is a distraction, right? Because mm -hmm. it's beyond, you know, it's so powerful and so overwhelming that it it takes away from the from the person underneath almost in a way. And so I like doing some of them in black and white, uh, you know. And then, you know, I took the big crowd scenes too and the people surfing and, uh, you know, crowd surfing and all the different colors and the audience and that stuff. But uh, mostly it was it was emotions and portraits that I was after. Cool. Well, if Julia is able to pull up anything, we'd love to see uh, her perspective, the his and hers perspective. Let us know if it will take a couple of minutes. I can't really because we're doing a we're using his laptop, so I can't really screen share from my library, but. I've got some on uh, this post that I've done. This this guy, I did like this one portrait of this guy especially because he was like. Uh, well, it looks like something I saw at the sort of a wanted poster. Where's all the joy, yeah, Ricardo? So like, <laughs> yeah, somebody that office. I shared a house with took it out of me. <laughs> what what were they doing? Oh. You up all night? I'm talking about Michael Bonacore, of course. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, we can come back to Julia. I can pull some of hers up. I just have to um, share a different screen. So here I'm going. Uh, yeah, to... Port portraits was all it for me. Yeah, here, I'm going to pull up. This is one of Julia's pictures of one of the photo walkers that came. Bye. This is Marcus Kara. And... You got him with his camera too, so which kind of plays into uh, some of our conversation here. Can we Photoshop so that hat? Cut now, doesn't he? <laughs> nice. Yeah, really. Take oh, the hat off. It's a great shot. How about this guy and his hat? Also, <laughs> take this one. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you got one of the color throw here. Oh yeah, a little bit. Do you, Do you see these pictures, Julia? I am now. Yeah, I can see it a little bit. Yeah, no, it was tons of fun. We had a great time. I had to run out, so I missed the bride that showed up. But uh, I had to run out and get some non-vegetarian food for Andrew. So, But um, those look great, too. Gosh, I can't believe I missed that. All right. Um, yeah, let's maybe. move over to Ricardo's got a picture, a portrait here. Show us your uh, portrait. So I shot the whole time with a 50 millimeter, even though it's on a crop lens, so it's more like 75, right? 80. That's great. I love that. And you know, this sort of this sort of scene really only lasted for like a second or two because everybody, when you shove a camera and when you when you're shooting with a 50 millimeter, you're so close that their immediate reaction is to smile or to break out of what they're doing and pose. And so the whole time that I was there, I kept on trying to surprise people because I wanted to. I had to get really close because I'm shooting with a 50, and I wanted to get a genuine emotion or a moment that wasn't posed. Um, and then when I looked at my photos and I, and, I, and, I, and I saw this, I think, like, this part for me, I think is probably the best photo I've made all weekend. That's great. It's nice work. Nice. Here, I'm going to quickly uh, share my screen and show a portrait oh, of the nice organizer nice. of the event. And uh, I, I, I had fun using my 14 to 24 on a full frame, shooting at 14 with the again with the tripod up high, and uh, just letting it uh, you know kind of autofocus and hoping to get the focus. And 
it went for the focus on the fingers, which I really like because uh, the Krishnas and especially Charu talks a lot about. Um, well, you, he talked in between bands, right? Did you guys ever listen to him? Yeah. yeah. You know, I did. I liked what he had to say. In fact, I'm thinking about trying out this whole Hare Krishna thing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. But no, he was a great guy. I, and that's a wonderful portrait of him. He must love it. Um, yeah, so that, I think that's just the perfect one for him. It's he, He's all about, like, this is a... Oh. He, he made a comment he, in the other video that Goodline did. He said, this is, this is one of the only uh, big event like this where people come together and it's not an event where they are mad about something. They're not competing against another team. It's not about... Uh, I win and you lose. It's just all about, you know, kind of having fun. You know what, Jarvi? One thing I will say about his preaching, you know, in a, a certain degree, I'm not a big fan of all that stuff. But, uh, you know, I did think it was nice that he was so inclusive. You know, he did say, you know, it kind of doesn't matter if you're here, if you're a Krishna or if you're a Mormon or if you're a Christian or if you're an atheist or whatever you are, as long as you're here and we love everybody. And I kind of like that spirit of it all, you know. Yeah, very very inclusive, very happy bunch. He was he was encouraging people. You can you can body surf, but uh, don't drop people, and you know send them backwards because if you send them forward, the people won't see them come and they'll just fall. So he was like giving them hints and everything. Yeah, uh, no, it was definitely a positive vibe. A positive vibe going through the whole thing. Let's let's run over. Who else has got a, a portrait for us? I just put one up. All right, John. This is a uh, this these moments happen so quickly that you you and it, it's like you're um, you're in this sort of play and you're shooting and you're trying to find the the, the emotion and uh, I just got very lucky. I, there's still this is not a you know great shot in terms of technical, but the the emotion is really awesome. Beautiful. Um, yeah, what lens was that with, John? That was a 70 to 200 and I, hold on, let me tell you what it, what it was. Ah, sorry about that. Yep. Uh, that was at almost all the way at, out to 200. Beautiful portrait. That's lovely. Such great emotion in there and the color and all of it, it works in her mouth. Look at her mouth. Yeah, it's crazy. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, by the way. That's, I, I got so lucky and I, I like, I, I, for me, I'll probably throw away you know, 90% of what I shot, but the ones that I'll keep are just like, they're, they're treasures, you know, like this, for me, this was a huge weekend in terms of photography. Like I really feel like almost life changing. And I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's really true for me. This was a big deal. Uh, David, you've been before. Was it different for you? Did you get any different portraits? Do you have a portrait to share? Yeah. Let me share. One here. I actually have three. Yeah, while you while you chat. And uh, I, I should, probably should have reviewed the ones that I took last year uh, just to see what I did do. Uh, but oftentimes what I do is I, I'll start at the bottom of the hill, walk up to the top of the hill, and I just look for anything that looks interesting. That's uh, fantastic. And so this one I really like just because the pink and the yellows and you capture the, the energy of this is right during the actual throw after everything goes pink for the most part. And you just start aiming at whatever moves in front of you because uh, you're in the crowd and you can't see too much. And uh, then in between uh, throws, uh, I would just go around and I always like to the, awesome. the glasses or the the face masks that people wear. I mean, I saw people with uh, birthday hats. And so I, I just look for anything different and uh, just go for the, I, I like the portrait land or uh, portrait uh, layout in here. And, uh, and then of course the body surfers are always fun. And I like this one where the lights falling on the, the crowd and the, the temple in the background. Yeah, that so, temple is really nice in the background. There was a great sunset that night, too, with that temple. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Do you guys feel like you could have just looked at anyone in the crowd and go, they look so unique, and you just focus on them for 
you know, a short period of time and they're bound to do something awesome. Like the, the shot was going to come. Yeah. Like I yes. saw this guy and I followed him for like 30 seconds. I'm like, he's very photogenic. He looks a little different. He's got bigger ears than normal. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I had a great smile the whole time. <laughs> You know, I, I think it was interesting, sort of the different characters, whether they were wearing a mask or whether they were wearing or whether they were a baby or whether they were a young kid or, you know, I was looking for sort of unique. I mean, there were an awful lot of just normal looking people. And I shot some of them because they were they were hanging out with our group and stuff. But uh, <laughs> beyond those guys, uh, you know, I was looking for things that were different and unusual and whether it was somebody that was very muscular or very fit or somebody that was the opposite and completely unfit or uh, I was looking for characters. I mean, because you, you don't get to shoot characters every day. You can't walk up and down the street and shoot characters. You can't get right in their face that way. But at a festival, you can. It reminds me of uh, USA, the, the station. Characters welcome, right? <laughs> yeah, characters are great. You know, what we, did, haven't did we... Mentioned, we haven't talked about is... Um... How easy, how also, how awesome it was that you could shoot kids there without, with impunity. Yeah. I was going to say that, that I was really surprised at how many kids were there. I had no idea. Baby. There were babies. Well, there was one uh, kid in particular that got a lot of pictures, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the same way, right? <laughs> Colby's yeah, huh? kid, yeah. Anyone, anyone have any pictures of this particular baby? Hey, Scott. I've actually got some portraits to show, and then I've got uh, that gonna... baby at the end there. So. All right, let's do it. Uh, this was the first one. I've got several, actually. Awesome. Um, I liked really... the really close-up ones, but I also liked when you could get one person in a crowd. Yeah. Kind of look your way and, and grab them. Um, liked the oh, action nice. shots. So, like, this, this woman was just dancing like crazy. So I got a lot of really good shots of her hair flying around. Um, looking for other people with cameras is always fun. This is one of my favorite portraits from the, from the festival. Beautiful. Here's the model, Scott, that you yeah. had come out with the, with the wedding dress and then the, the male models you recruited from the crowd to, to walk with her. That was pretty cool. She looks like scared of them. <laughs> I think it's a really great look though. It's kind of like this yeah. lost lost look on her face it's really great her kids were great too. yeah her kids are really cool um talking about the little kids there were so many kids i mean what what awesome thing for a kid to do to be able to go to this and and be told here's a bunch of colorful stuff now run around and throw it on everyone <laughs> so you know the kids were having a really great time oh, and here's uh, someone we might know oh, natalia yeah. stone roma nice. our fellow photo walkers and Here's the Jack Attack. There he is. <laughs> Officially the cutest family ever. Except except for Avon and Max, who were also there, which were just as <laughs> cute. Uh-oh. Rivalry. There's a rivalry now. Nice. So, uh, yeah, we told Colby since he brought a little, you know, little baby, and we were able to take some pictures that we would uh tag the the pictures of colby and his his kid and, and jack attack and uh and we're going to show a, a couple more of pictures of little jack brown who's got who else has got one uh, i got one scott let's see it michael all right well i still have a portrait too um, okay and then yeah we're a little Do so uh Unfortunately, I have I had two weddings this weekend that I had to shoot both on Saturday, so I didn't get to process everything I wanted to. So a lot of these I've already shared. <laughs> That's uh, great, love that. Awesome. But so this is uh, oh, yeah. photoshopping, right? <laughs> Believe it or not, no Photoshop has been done on this uh, on this photo. So this was a guy um, just walking around, scanning the crowd, and this guy opened his mouth and saw the chompers and. Quickly got the camera up, and he must have seen me get the camera up because he decided to uh, play along. And I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and by cool, you mean disturbing. Yes, okay. disturbing. 
And uh, that's my Jack Attack photo. Can you, you guys see click it? click to tag the face. Yeah, click face to tag. <laughs> Jack. Scott Jack. Darby. Just put Scott Darby. <laughs> That's my Jack attack. Oh, that's my Jack ones. attack photo that that was taken outside of uh, a amazing restaurant that Scott Jarvey recommended and brought us to. I don't know how we fit uh, 50 odd people in that small back room, but we somehow did. Um, and uh, Jack that decided to was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was excellent. So was the I think I still have the. I, I think I still have the leftovers in my car, but that's for another story. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's just really mesmerizing. You know, it's, it's I think it's the feel of the uh, that you did on the skin, or something like that. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, so I did a little work on this photo. I lightened up his face a little bit. He had some uh, harsh shadows on on his right side of the face, and uh, obviously it was no flash, very low light outside. So I had the fifty millimeter set at one point four. Hence why you can't see Colby in the background, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's we'd good. much rather see we'd much rather see Jack than Colby. <laughs> I did like that Mexican restaurant the first night and that vegetarian restaurant the second night. Yeah. yeah the <laughs> Light dining. Okay. We're actually gonna get to that. We're gonna share a few tips about uh photo walking right after we uh finish up with the festival. Uh we're we're just gonna go on this little theme of uh, Jack for one moment, because I see over here that David's got a picture. Yeah, I, I didn't at the time know there was a Jack attack. I just saw everyone in the world photographing this baby, and I thought, let's photograph the photographers photographing Jack. And so this is an aerial view, and we've got at least four photographers sitting down and taking photos, and there's a few behind that are taking even more. This is the day before at the uh, Temple Square in downtown Salt Lake. Um, uh, yeah, I also did my uh, my picture that I'm going to share uh, that same day. Uh, actually, I've got a little bit of a surprise to share. You're getting married. No, yeah. <laughs> You're pregnant. That was yesterday, April 1st. Oh. Um, I, mean, I, I said April 1st was you're getting your vanity URL, and today's you're getting married. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did everyone get their vanity URL yesterday? It was only available yesterday. Yep, yes. I got mine. Nice. There was a vanity URL? Yeah. yeah. For Google, you can get a Google plus vanity URL. Yeah. Oh, yesterday missed. only. Oh, well. Yeah. I got, I got Thomas Hawk. Google worker with no last. You had to do it through YouTube, though, Ricardo. No, I thought you had to do it through Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Either Facebook or. So uh, earlier that day, you know, a big part of the of the three day photo walk that I organized was figuring out really cool places to go and eat. And uh, we had fifteen at lunch, or well, the fifteen to twenty people at lunch. Maybe there's more. I think it's and uh, Colby Brown. I don't know if people know him or not. He's been on some other Twit shows as well, Twit Photo, uh, as a special guest there, landscape photographer. And we we're talking about his his kid there. But I sat down next to him, and I'm just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a time lapse of little Jack um, as he played around at the table. So bear with us as we're going to watch the video, which has uh, – I, I grabbed it, some creative comments. It it's really small on the screen. Make it a little bigger or something. There we go. Uh, which was some creative common music. We're going to watch this little 50 second. Oh, 
I know you guys nice. are oh, I didn't I see any that. hands in the air, though. That was so great. Bravo, Jarvi. Bravo. I like that Kanye West. That was the failing. That could go so viral. You, you have to post that tonight. <laughs> yes. Yes. I like just that need some cats or dogs in the photo. <laughs> so that was uh, 600 pictures of little Jack. Yeah. That was awesome. At 24 frames a second. Actually, it's like 12 frames a second because I doubled the amount of pictures so that there could be... Are you, are you going to do a blog post on how you're doing, how you make, how, what you're learning and, and how you're doing this? Yeah, sure. I got to post that one now on, uh, <laughs> on Google Plus so, so that it can go viral and get like a thousand hits and I'll, I'll rub it in Devin's face. I got a thousand hits. Yeah, make that Devin guy put that on his YouTube account. Yeah, <laughs> then I'll get a million. So, uh, no, that's pretty pretty cool though. That he's, uh, you know, I I remember being at that uh, on that movie set, and he was asking, "Hey, are these DSLRs any good?" You know, and he's like, "I'm thinking about getting one. I think about getting a D, you know, a, a Nikon uh, D90." Uh, and I was like, "Yeah, they seem pretty good." You know, I'm using a different one, but it doesn't have video. And he would ask me. Uh, questions about them and now he's like teaching classes about it so who jack uh, no devin oh devin oh yeah Dave's baby <laughs> yeah jack the jack attack so there you are i wonder if I, I i'm pretty sure colby's watching he better be so you're welcome for your for your video <laughs> yeah that was super you better reshare that yeah, yeah, you better. Um, okay. Um, anyone else have a quick picture of? Uh, well, no, well, let's let's fit. I want to be the high note on that. So we're done with with Jack pictures. Um, the the photo walk in general. I, I know we're talking a lot about the festival. It was um, built around the Festival of Colors. It was a two day event, but I decided. Well, mostly because you, Thomas, said that you wanted to come a couple days early. So I was like, well, let's make it a little more. And I know Thomas really wants to get uh, Salt Lake for part of his 100 Biggest Cities project. So I'll do another day in which we focus on Salt Lake. And I organized quite a few events that day and uh, uh, lunch at, at a nice Red Rock uh, brewery. And uh, we had breakfast in a small town near where we did Sunrise. Charvi, like, that, that was just absolutely amazing. And uh, thank you, thank you to you and to everybody else involved. Uh, yeah, I wanted to shoot. I, I mean, I came there, to, I think, primarily to shoot the Colors Festival. But uh, Salt Lake City is not one of the 100 largest U.S. cities, believe it or not. But it is a very popular U.S. city. And I definitely want to include it in my collection of U.S. cities. And, um you know, it was just perfect, Jarvi. I mean, everything about the weekend, even beyond the Colors Festival. I mean, the, the things that we got to see, the things that we got to shoot. And unfortunately, I'm so slow with my processing, I haven't touched any of that stuff. But, you know, from heading out to those ruins uh, that we shot, uh, that Sam took us out with you in the, in the sand dunes, and to Jesse Stay getting us on top of the LDS building, which is the tallest building in, in, uh, in and Salt Lake. Yeah, in Utah. Is that the tallest building in Utah? Easily, yeah. Yeah, I mean, getting up there at sunset to shoot down on the temple, I mean, that's epic. You know, so I just, I felt, and, and you're getting us in to shoot the symphony. I loved that. I mean, how often do you get, we're walking into this symphony hall that Jarvie got us into. Uh, I, I mean, I prefer it empty. There's like nobody in there, so you get to really focus on the abstract nature of the seats and all this. And as you're walking in, you see a sign on the door that says, no recording devices or photography. And here we are being walked in there to just, you know, shoot to our heart's content. So, you know, the whole weekend, everything, I mean, the food, the things we got to shoot, the sunrises, the little towns. I mean, I loved, you know, I shot more Banksy's in Park City. That was fantastic. You know, uh, the whole thing, it was, it was great. Uh, you know, everything about it. I, you know, I had a, Fantastic time. The Salt Lake Public Library. Boy, what a place that thing is, right? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Lotus, I know that you 
organize a lot of uh, photo walks. What do you think makes for a photo walk? And I know that there's differences. There's like the two hour version. Yeah. And uh, recently we've been doing like the three day version with a lot of photo Google plus people. Yeah. I was going to say, I think that's a kind of a different venture um, from the ones that I've been doing around here. And I was going to say one of the big things that I like to do with those, I think every, every one of the ones I've done a plan cast page is like the hub and then, making sure that you share out to all of your social networks to just kind of round everyone up. Easy to kind of try to stay loyal to one, but, you know, if you really want to draw a crowd, put it out to everywhere. But PlanCast is a nice pay place to kind of organize around. You can have everybody RSVP there so you get an idea of how many people. But, you know, this thing like what you did is it's much different. I haven't had really experience in doing something that big where you – and have to organize people across days. That's much bigger, and it seems much more difficult. It was far more ambitious and a, and a wonderful undertaking. It was now, uh, I noticed that people started to use, to help organize where everyone was at and what was going on, they started to use Google Messenger. What, what, what was it that you guys were using? Oh, the Google mobile app, the Messenger on there. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a pretty great way to draw well. everybody together, yeah. It's like this long-running conversation that you don't really have to be a part of until you want to jump in and talk a little bit, and you can jump out at any time. And get the information that people are dropping about, you know, what they've discovered. They got there before you did. Is there parking? Where to go? Yeah, yeah. where is everybody? And then once you share, know, share photos. You could share photos yeah. on that. Yeah, and that was really cool. People started posting photos straight off their phone. Yeah, so for a place where there is actually cell reception, that was a really good way to communicate <laughs> with everybody. Oh, yeah, we've done other stuff in, like, Death Valley and Yosemite. Yeah, just, a little less. Yeah, everybody just all over the place, and nobody knows where anybody is. Nice. Jeremy. Yes. You have a couple of pictures to share? Uh, I know that you have some pretty fun ones uh, from the other day of the event, right? Friday? Yeah. Um, yeah, I have. I really like the sunrise one. Um, I didn't like getting up that early, but I like the actual sunrise event and then my other favorite was the Do you uh, have one of those? Yes. Let's see let's see the sunrise. I uh, I took everyone uh, a far off location. This is what I got for the uh, sunrise. Um, that is Mount Tippinotus in the back. We went to Aspen Grove parking lot. Um, and then that's just a like it was basically a snowshoe trail that you can see leading off into the distance. Um, it, I'm guessing this was about a, I think it was a 30 second exposure, um, 35 second exposure. So you can see the stars, but not quite as much as I would have actually liked, but um, still fairly pleased with how it came out. Um, and then this one is of the cathedral in Salt Lake which I absolutely love that church. I've always loved it. Um, the inside, as you can see, is just totally colorful. The stained glass is amazing. Um, but I was just, luckily I was there before everyone else. So I could get set up my shot exactly how I wanted without photographers coming through and messing everything up. Um, <laughs> Thank you, photographers. Like I know. <laughs> so I was, I had, I had about, 10, 15 minutes before everyone else where I could just get the shot exactly how I wanted it. And I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Nice. Anyone, uh, we're, we're, we're coming towards the end. We're still going to share uh, a couple more pictures and uh, and have someone that uh, we're going we're gonna to spend a little what Trey usually does is share some new fun photographer or someone that's maybe not as followed on Google Plus and share them. But first... Uh, Thomas was talking a little bit about getting up on top of this tall building, and John has got a picture of this. Ooh, look at that. That's beautiful. This this is probably one of my technically best pictures I've ever taken. 25-second um, exposure, and uh, it, it just I, – I didn't have any kind of – I had a UV filter. That's it. Um, so there's some work with the sky and the sun, but I, I – really just did some balancing work. I probably need to do a little bit more work around the temple, which is in the foreground, the building that's kind of bright and the fairy castle building in the foreground. But um, this was like 
a magic night. It was really incredible. The sunset was amazing. And uh, we were able to stay long enough to get the lights to come on and the, and still have a nice sunset. It was just an incredible night. And Jesse thanks, Stay really hooked us yeah, up with thanks that. Thanks again to Jesse Stay, huh? How cool was that? Yeah. Yeah, I've been in this uh, state for like 10 years, and that was my first time up on top, and I got to experience it with the with It's the not open. Like, yeah. you can't get up there. Like, that was a special thing. They they close it at 6 or whatever. Like, you, well, you can't. Work is done. It's a, it's an office building, yeah. and work is done, and, you know, it's closed. So, yeah, it was a uh, And uh, some of the other people got a little closer to the temple from another tall building, not 23 stories. They were at like nine or 10, uh, like you, David. Yes, we went to uh, the Joseph Smith Memorial Building, which is uh, the next tallest building in that area. Uh, we went up to the 10th floor and it was super crowded with lots of tourists. And uh, so we went down to the ninth floor, uh, turned off all the lights in one observation room uh, closed all the doors. There was a wedding reception going on next door, and uh, the uh, catering staff said, oh, don't worry about it. Go ahead, take photos, turn off all the lights. And uh, this is an HDR photograph that I created uh, using Photoshop, actually. Uh, it turned out better than the other HDR programs that I typically use. That's beautiful, too. So That's nice. Lovely. I like the angle. That's a great angle. I wish I had a tilt shift lens that was wide enough and then I could get the building perfectly straight, but I like it, this one a lot. After the fact, I realized I needed to clean my sensor. I had uh, about 50 dots. It looked like the surface of Mars. Uh, so I cleaned that up after a little bit of Photoshop work. Nice. All right. Uh, I'm going to try to get a couple more pictures in there a little bit, but let's, let's jump into uh, some photographers. Who has Jeremy, one, Jeremy, one last thing before you do that, though. One thing I do want to say is that I was one thing I was super impressed with, with was this was my first trip to Utah, and everybody in Utah I found was so friendly, from all the people that you hooked us up with to the to the for the photo walks, just to people in general. You know, it's a it, what a hospitable place. I mean, I I loved that. I mean, I had such a I left Utah with such a great impression for what Utah is about. You made a police officer that ticketed you on the way out. He was really nice, wasn't he? <laughs> you know, I had no trouble with the police in Utah. No, but I mean, it just seemed everybody was very accommodating and friendly, and uh, you know, I you didn't get hassled for your photography at all, and everybody was pretty pretty open, and uh, I, you know, I liked that. Not bad for a flyover state. <laughs> no, it's great. I I thought it was a great state. I'm I'm. Well, we do have Moab, the Salt Flat, Zions yeah. Park. So there's plenty of reasons to come out to photograph Utah. Oh, I'm coming back to do southern Utah. But but this whole experience with just Salt Lake was, was really positive. All right. So who would like to start us off? Uh, I'll start us off. All right. Um, I'll start it off. That's a good segue. Oh. <laughs> Near you, Thomas. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, a good segue with the uh, with the Southern National National Parks. Uh, I actually went, uh, I think, about two and a half weeks earlier uh, than everyone else, and uh, pretty much lived in my car uh, for uh, about two weeks. Um, but I didn't live in my car by myself. I lived in my car with uh, an amazing couple, uh, Roma and Natalia. We saw a picture of them before. And uh, me, Roma, and Natalia uh, went to uh, Bryce, Arches, uh, Canyonland, Zion uh, for two weeks, uh, Star Trails, time-lapse videos. Jarvie came, came and met us for a while, uh, and it was just incredible, um, an amazing experience. And, and everyone needs to follow Roma and Natalia. Uh, uh, you can find them at My Seven Continents. Um, and the cool thing about them is they really just gave up everything and started driving across the country. And they've been doing that for about six, seven months now with a quick stop back at home. But uh, they're an amazing couple, great photographers, and uh, fun people. Nice. Yeah, Thomas, who do you got? Uh, 
you know, I was going to show Brad Sloan, who uh, is a wonderful photographer. Uh, he's also someone who's incredibly active on Google+. Plus. Yeah. Can you guys see my screen? Good pick. Yep. Yeah, Brad's great, and uh, I like his stuff. Uh, you know, beautiful photography, and he's a great, great photographer, but he's also, uh, you know, a great social photographer. And he's uh, very interactive. He's someone, if you're not following him on Google+, Plus, you should be because, you know, he does great, great work, and he's uh, very much uh, – oh, he's in the chat room, I see. Hey, Brad. Uh, he's very much a, a part of the social fabric of what Google Plus is about. And I like that. I like when you find someone who's incredibly talented as a photographer and someone who is also uh, very generous as a contributor. So great work and uh, definitely someone you want to check out. Nice. Who else got one? Ricardo, you got one? I'm looking him up. Uh, go to someone else. I, I'm not sure. I got something. I got – so All right. uh, for, for me – one of the great things about this, this was my first photo walk, really. I, I've walked around and taken photos before, but never with such a large group. And so I got to meet everybody who was here was an amazing photographer. And this is uh, Eric, uh, Eric James. Um, and uh, his work is crazy. Like uh, there's this water thing and then this one. And can you see that? I just changed that's great. That's Stanford. Yeah. And then the sort of HDR long exposure thing. Uh, but nice guy too. Really awesome. And, um, great. I, I, I could probably say that about everybody that came it, just amazing people. It was a great experience. And Eric James, a lot of people might know him as Eric Leffler. Leffler. Yeah. And I just put his uh, link in the chat as well. So He's Eric a James great Leffler. guy, really wonderful talent. Another wonderful, talented photographer. Yeah, he's awesome. All right, who we got next? Lotus, you're going to share one? Yeah, I've got somebody. Um, it's Jake Easley, and I've been following him on G Plus for a long time. And the reason why I wanted to share him is because he does really great work, but he's also just this really big personality, this really big, happy. I don't know. When I look at his stream, he always makes me laugh or think about something. He does a thing called Mixed Messages Monday. And he's got a really great sense of humor. So you can see, like, he'll have, like, some kind of uh, demented self-portraits. So like from... That looks like somebody from the Colors Festival. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so he goes from, uh, like, this kind of That's stuff funny. where... You might think it's slightly disturbing. Looks like Jarvie. <laughs> to, <laughs> Thanks. To these really beautiful, um, you know, nature macros and such. And his work is really great. Jake's so he's, great. He's running the gamut there, you know, from disturbing self-portrait to dreamy <laughs> nature mm, photography. Beautiful. But he's also really funny and like very, very interactive all around G+. He's just a really great person to know and to follow. And, and he's been in my photographer's I follow circle before too, Lotus. And that's another good reason why you should follow him. He's got the TH recommendation. I followed him early like you. Um, all right. David or Jeremy. I have someone. Um... Mine is Frank Frank, ha ah, Frank Hatcher. Um, he was actually Arizona-based photographer. Uh, he's actually one of the first photographers that I actually got together with whenever I was first learning. Um, but his work is just phenomenal. He does great macro work. His portraits are superb. Um, he's just an all-around great guy. Um, he, he loves teaching. He He's just real kind. He's unfortunately not that active on Google Plus, at least not yet. Hopefully after this, um, but he he's a, he's a great guy, um, and he really helped me out whenever I was learning and showed me the ropes and really just showed me the way. Nice. And David. Um, and I picked another local uh, Salt Lake photographer, Scott Stringham. He is uh, primarily a landscape photographer. And he has done a lot of photography out on uh, the Great Salt Lake, uh, which 
uh, and and he's also uh, a while ago we had a uh, when Kelby Training had their uh, photo walk, he took everyone out to uh, the Great Salt Lake, and we did the uh, fire uh, or steel wool, set it on fire, and spin it over your head so it flies all over the place. I know oh, the I'm not finding, touch. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm not finding any of his uh, examples, but he's got some really cool uh, landscape stuff that I always enjoy. His work is uh, really good. I follow him also, and he's, he's really good to follow. We are, uh, yeah, he's very active in the Utah community. And uh, another person who helped kind of like develop this Utah community oh. of photographers out here is, uh, his name is Jeremy Hall. In fact, years ago, he would uh, put together uh, what we called Photo Camp Utah. You know, 300, 400 people come together for a day of training. Uh, Jeremy Jeremy's was a great guy. Yeah, he like was Jeremy. at the first day of the photo walk. Yeah. And uh, so you can see a, a familiar picture there. And uh, we went to Park City afterwards, and uh, he got his minimalistic pictures in there as well. But... He posts a lot of pictures on there, pretty active, uh, known him for a long time. Again, one of the more uh, well-known people in, in this community, at least, wouldn't you say, David? Yes, he is. And Jeremy's he has been involved online in a lot of different communities for a number of years, even before Google+. Plus. Look, he's even got a picture of you, Ricardo. <laughs> I love that. That's a great picture. At breakfast. I'm so happy. Yeah, messed yeah. up hair look. Yeah, that's great. That was an yeah. early morning. You're allowed to have messed up hair on those sunrise days. Yeah. You're also allowed to uh, get in igloos. Yes. That was so awesome. <laughs> that thing was crazy on the inside. I didn't know it was so roomy, and I could actually stand up in there. Nice. Was okay, cool. we are uh, coming to the end of the show. Is that right, Dave? Dave Beffer. Hey, Lotus, where's my uh, yeah, 5D Mark III? Uh, did now. everyone? <laughs> Somebody else is holding it. No, we're going to do it's a couple. Right? Is, did, uh, did everyone get to share their uh, I have someone. I have someone. In now. the snow. Uh, Ricardo's okay. got someone. Yeah, so um, uh, I'm not sure if everybody here knows. I mean, I think a lot of people in here know Barry Blanchard. And... Um, Barry's just one of the nicest persons I've met. He's a Santa Cruz-based photographer, and he does a lot of sunsets. He does a lot of landscape, and he does birds. And um, he hasn't been taking photographs for that long, and he's just gotten incredibly good it, since he started doing it for uh, like with it, seriously. Um, so, if uh, you guys should check it out, his uh, his photographs, and they're just you know he does some macro work too. Everything like you know what's around. Santa Cruz, and this is incredibly good. Barry's great. I love his work. It's good stuff. Julia, do you have anyone to share? Who do you like oh, watching? Such limited time. I kind of just watch really the most active. But uh, I met a lot of new great people. Hopefully they'll become more active. But nobody yeah. in particular. Anyone from the photo walk that you uh, have been uh, added to your little list that you didn't know before? Everybody, everybody I've added. Um, she finally added me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't know which circle she put you in, Thomas. Yeah, I know. Brian, Brian Buck and stuff. Hey, one, one thing uh, we should point out that got a lot of attention, too, uh, is what this does to your camera. Chris Chabot had a post that got like a million uh, plus ones or something. And it's this his camera here. This is what a 5D Mark III looks like at the uh, Colors Festival. That's a brave and, uh, person. Yeah. Like we all have said, uh, we came back and nothing really happened to our cameras. Right. <laughs> that way, no of. Give it three months. Wait, this is uh, whose camera is this, Michael? That's Chris Chabot's. That's Chris Chabot's camera. Oh, Michael's. Okay. Oh, Michael's got another one on there. Oh, there he is. Yeah. He's got to unmute himself, but yeah. That is no, because uh, Dave's running Trace account. I think. That is actually uh, that's my. F nice. The, the camera I have up is actually my 5D Mark III. 
Dude. Nice. You guys are crazy. <laughs> and I took that with uh, I took that with my iPhone. So that's an iPhone pick of my thirty five hundred dollar five D Mark three. <laughs> yeah. So, so did, you, did you clean your iPhone? At least it was more right? protected than Chris and Tom's. <laughs> no. <laughs> I threw it away. I don't need it. <laughs> well, we are uh, we're coming to the end, like I said, and uh, you know, it was a great event. I'm glad everyone came. We had, uh, I think there was over 20 people from out of state that came in. A lot of them got a house and stayed there. A few people got hotels, and uh, we ate really well. We had some really good photography opportunities. and We, we got people- to hear, Scott, we got to hear a great lecture by the great Scott Jarvey to, like, millions of people about Google+. Plus. One night. Oh, yeah, I gave a lecture the day before the photo walk did. to about 400 businesses in Utah about Google+. Plus. Oh, Scott, you're being modest. 400,000, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You did a great job, Scott. It was You did a wonderful job. Oh, yeah. nice. You did a great job oh, organizing this. You got to show that shot. I'm organizing another event in October, in fact, even better and bigger. No Krishna is involved this Would time. You like to tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> well, if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring uh, the, minds want to know. The photography, the, the pho- photography decathlon, is going to be o- o- start October 9th. and it's going to start off with this day of education, and we're flying in ten amazing photographers, which are uh, we're going to have help from the community to decide on them. They're going to be one each to represent each different of the 10 styles because it is a decathlon and they're going to come and give classes and some uh, be on some panels. And then after that, for the next two and a half days, uh, we'll have teams go out and compete and go out and, and, and get a small portfolio for each of the 10 different styles of photography. So we're talking like landscape and portraiture and architecture, macro night photography, which, you know, Michael, you should be excited about. Uh, we also got commercial photography. You get the point. There's 10 of them. It is in the fall, and we're going to be up in the mountains and, and these really nice cabins, and some other people will stay in some hotels. Um, it's going to be heavily a big video influence. So we're going to try to get video of everything uh, so that we can share it on YouTube for those that were able to come because we can always – handle maybe a, a select amount of teams, about 30 teams of two to four people in each. And, and then those that are really hardcore can uh, come in and compete as individual contestants against each other as well. And uh, the, the, I just posted, in fact, today about uh, about this event on my blog. So um, if people just find me, Scott Jarvie, uh they can find the post to that, the Photography Decathlon. In fact, they could just add the photogra- Photography Decathlon on Google Plus for now until we get photographydecathlon.com uh, officially up and running. Uh, and that's going to be in October, so that should be a much bigger and more better event. I, I can't believe you got Beyonce to come model for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, out Shakira was, wasn't... Uh, available, so we just went with Beyonce. Kesha. Be lovely. Yeah. Cool, that sounds awesome. Um, yeah, so, and and then we have another, uh, you know, Trey's going to be back next week. Is that right, Dave? Yes, he should be. Um, the current plan is to do the, uh, the photo walk down under. We're going to cover that. That just happened in Australia, the big giant photo walk. That's the plan. Hopefully, we'll stick to it. And uh, tomorrow, we got Twit Photo with uh, Leo Laporte and Catherine Hall. We got uh, Michael Greco, 1.30 p.m. Pacific. So that should be good. Rock and roll. Well, Thanks for thank, having us. We thank Twit for uh, having us around and uh, Trey for letting us play while the cat's away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so what we're going to do is um, in a minute here, I'm going to end the broadcast from Trey's account. Um, Tony's going to stick around, I think, for a little bit and keep the Twit thing going. You guys are free to hang out for a little while and just have some fun. And 
I guess we'll all wave goodbye right now to the camera because this is the official end of the show. Ah, I still love you. <laughs>